<laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Adam Ratliff with Adam So Fun, and today we are doing the final step in making this Mary Beth whole cloth quilt. Um, this design is from Lady Jane Quilting, who is Talene Jeffrey. Um, it is available at quiltable.com, you know, my favorite place to shop. Um, this design itself is done at this point. We've um, done a few videos where we've stitched the whole thing out, but we're going to go in and we're going to add some more details to it. Um, for those of you who don't have automation, remember there are paper patterns available. These are some of her other ones. This is the Kelly pattern and this is the Jane pattern. Um, I believe there's six or seven. Even Quiltable has a few other ones. I believe they might have Kelly or Jane, one of them, um, on the Quiltable site. And remember, always when shopping a quiltable, code ASF10 will save you an additional 10% off your purchase. So um, if you're new to the channel, I'm Adam, Adam So Fun, and I make weekly videos using the long arm or quilting or embroidery or scan and cut, uh, just a little bit of everything in the uh, fiber arts world. Uh, I like to share my passion and my love because I think everybody should think more about doing it and having a good time than stressing about being so perfect. Um, so if you like this video, like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you're notified when new videos drop. Like I said, I try to drop a new video every Friday. And if you haven't, follow me on social media. That's Adam So Fun with an S-E-W on Facebook and Instagram, where you see a lot of things that don't hit the channel. And if you do follow me there, you've already seen pictures of this um, semi-complete. I took a picture of half of it, uh, or as much as it fit in my throat, um, a few weeks ago because this is when I actually did it but it takes a few weeks for the videos to drop. So today, um, I want to get up close and personal. I wanna show you how to how I'm removing the, um, the jump stitches in our basket weave. Uh, we're gonna talk about feet, we're gonna talk about needles, and most importantly, I am going to be running two threads through my needle, which is why we're kind of sitting at this angle today. You can see on my Infinity, I have th two thread posts. So I'm going to be running the same color. This is this is Magnifico Thread by Superior Threads. And remember that code ASF10 when uh, shopping at superiorthreads.com will also save you 10%. Uh, um, I'm running the same color because I'm going to do some really dense stitching. The idea is that we're going to go into some of these sections and we're going to stitch really tight. We're going to add details around the feathers. We're going to add details around the circles. So the reason that um, we're going to be running two colors we're going to be adding really tight stitching. We're going to do some details around these feathers. We're going to do some details around these pebble work. Uh, even in the outside squirrel area, we're going to kind of detail around that. So we want to put a lot of thread down while we do that because that's going to kind of change the color of the fabric where it, essentially we're thread painting. And um, you can do it twice as fast when you have two of the same color running through the needle. So there's a few things we need to do. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to change the needle. We're gonna be changing this to a size 19. And I know that this is a 19 because the number is right there. I know this is the right uh, side kind of needle for my machine because it has the 134. I always recommend getting your uh, needles from your local handy quilter retailer because then you know that needle is going to fit because you're getting handy quilter needles. Um, and you can see this one's actually stamped HQ. Um, today I'm using my, uh, my hex wrench. This is a tool from um, Sawyer Creek Artisans. I love it because it sits on a chain and I can use it anywhere. Um, but when I pull it out, it has a hex wrench. So the hex wrench sits right in there. Barry. So I will loosen my hex wrench. I'm working around the camera here. There we are. You want to be sure when you're changing needles, when you use this hex wrench, you want the wrench all the way seated inside the, um, the nut or whatever that is, the screw, because if it's not, you're not going to get, um, you're gonna strip your screw. So you gotta be very careful. All right, so now we'll put our new needle in. And we wanna make sure that it's facing forward. I can see, I can see the groove of the needles right there. I can run my fingernail in it. The eye is pointed straight at me. And 
I will twist. Sometimes when you do that last twist, the eye of the needle is going to shift a little bit. So you want to make sure you keep an eye on that. Um, there are little magnets that you can get to help you see if it's facing straight. Um, if I can find them, I will link them below. Um, some shops carry them. They're just little tiny, uh, they call them needle magnets. There we are. Um, sometimes people will use the old needle to hold the eye this way and make sure that everything's pointed straight. Whatever, whatever way you do it that works for you, that's how you should do it. And here's a pro tip. Here's my old pack. Here's my sharp needle that is used, that is done. I stick it upside down in whatever pack that I'm putting my needles into, and I know that any pointing up have been used. So pro tip. Now my needle's threaded, and I need to, um, or not my needle's threaded, my new needle's changed, and I need to put my threads on. So when you're running two threads, I have a Hugo's Amazing Tape. I'm gonna put this somewhere where I'll remember, probably in a week or so I'll remember where it is. So I'm gonna put both my threads on. Uh-oh, not getting stuck on everything. So the back thread's gonna go straight up into its thread mast. The forward thread is going up into its thread mast. I have a, quite a bit of thread up there now. So this is my old thread. And here are my two, two new threads. I will line them up. And just like if I were changing one, I'm just gonna take all three, tie a knot. Don't ask me what kind of knot it is. It's the one where you wrap it around and pull it through. So there's my knot. And now I can pull the thread. I usually pull it right from above, right from above my pigtail. And I'm gonna pull it through, making sure that it's still tight coming through those tension discs. Looks good. Through my pigtails. And now I'm cutting myself a nice tip. So I can go through the guides on my, uh, near my needle. So the top one, the collar, and then the eye. And you want to make sure you get both threads through that eye. So now my needle is threaded. It's that easy. And now I have two threads. We went up a size. So um, we're using Magnifico. It's a 40 weight thread. You should use a size 18 needle. But since we're using two, I'm just going to go up one size. We're going to see if that works. If we're having any tension issues with it, we'll go up one more. So it's just a kind of a, a trial and error. I did stitch all of this out with 2096, uh, which was the green color. So now we're going on to that yellow color. The other thing I want to do is I want to change my foot. So I'm going to change my foot to the micro foot. So this is the micro foot. I call it the broken foot because it looks like it's missing something. And really this foot is just here to hold fabric down while you stitch. So if I were stitching, pretend my needle is right here, look how much more view I'm going to be able to get by using this micro foot than using the sure foot that's on there. I don't have any more uh, ruler work to do so I can take that sure foot off. So again, I'm going to use my Sawyer Creek Artistry hex wrench and try not to hit my camera. And when you change your foot, you're going to loosen the, uh, loosen the screw, but we're not taking it all the way out. We want to loosen it enough so the foot jingle jangles. And then this back pole on mine, it's in the back on uh, Amara Forte or any of the machines except for the Moxie and the Infinity. This is going to be on the side, but ours are in the back. This is your hopping foot bar, the back bar, the one that has the foot on it. We're going to grab that and lift and the foot will fall off. Um, this is spring loaded and it is a very hard spring to move. So just be aware that um, it might, you might feel like you're going to break it. You're definitely not going to break it. Now we can slide our foot on and sometimes we're going to have to lift that up to get our foot on. And now I always, always hold my foot up with one hand while I screw that screw with the other hand. I want to make sure the foot is always in all the way seated up in there and tighten. So now there is my broken foot with my uh, two needle or two thread, two thread threaded needle. Yeah, we're gonna call it that.
All right, before we start stitching, we want to check our tension. I've already cleaned my bobbin. I use my favorite new gadget, my, um, what is this? My mini electric air duster. I will link this below, but instead of using canned air, I use this air duster. Um, we'll see if I can get a better picture of it. Oh, maybe here. Oh yeah. So um, I like this thing, it recharges, and it blows a lot of air. You can see it move the uh, batting right there. So it's just very awesome. Thank you, Missy, for the suggestion. Um, so let's check our tension. We are running through needle or two needles, two threads through the uh, through the tension disc. So you might need to change it a little bit. But um, Magnifico being a slippery thread, it feels pretty similar. One thing we're going to hear is we're using a, th a thicker needle and we're using um, the two threads. So you can almost hear like a boom, 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 boom every time it punctures that fabric because it is a thick needle going through um, two layers of fabric and two layers of batting. So I'm just gonna stitch a little bit and try not to get my arm in the way. Um, top tension is looking good. I don't think you can see it from both cameras, but you can see that it's already, we see yellow there now. Um, let me stitch a little higher. And now I'm gonna look at the underside. That's what I like about these side clamps. I can pop them off really easily and just kind of flip this around. Oh, that tension looks fantastic. So tension is good, we're a go. Let me pull that bobbin up and trim. And I'll get my side clamps back on. Find my scissors. And remember, all of this stuff over on the side is gonna be trimmed off, so we're gonna be okay. <clears throat> so, side clamps. And these are my um, so tight side clamps. There is a video, I'll link it below. So let me zoom out. Let me bring you over here. See if I can get you set up. Now we have to decide which areas we're gonna be stitching in on this quilt. Um, originally I was going to stitch these diamonds and come into this design. But as I was looking at it when I was pulling out my threads over here um, in the basket weave, I realized that if I stitch the flower, which is kind of these petaled pieces, they open up into this divider section, which comes up into the basket weave. So by stitching out the flower part, I can stitch all of this into this, basically outlining this flower shape. I'll have the interior piece of the flower I can come in and stitch on both sides. Um, plus, I can go in and dense fill the center of the basket weave. Ooh, but that would put the colors right next to each other here. I'm gonna have to think about that. because we're also going to be stitching this background around the feathers. Now, I think we're going back to the original plan. We're gonna do the diamond, the center piece, and the outside piece of both of the flowers. Um, we'll come in and do the background piece around these circles here. Can you, you can see. <clears throat> and that will lead us into the background around the feathers and doing the background around the pebbles. I think that's, that's, I'm going back to the original plan. And here's the thing. Once I start stitching this, I'm not ripping it out. So it is what it is. Uh, I might 
do little pieces here and there. But uh, my first step is to do my diamond piece. So the center flower is gonna be open and there's a connector here so I can stitch straight from this into my two center pieces and my um, outside petals. So let's do that first. Um, I am gonna stitch in manual mode. Um, I would suggest that you try manual mode out if it's something you might wanna try. So manual mode means the machine is gonna stitch and I'm the regulator. Um, it's for some people like it and some people don't so if you feel like that might not be for you that's okay you don't have to do it that way i just do it that way um well i'm actually i've been a convert i never did it that way and now i'm starting to um i used to stitch and just turn my stitches uh my uh my cruise up to like 250 I don't really like to go over that because um, I know a lot of people tend to stop to think what they're going to do next and then they end up just knotting up their fabric um, or knotting up their thread and breaking their thread. But um, I would stitch my, my stitch length to like 16 or 18 and then that up to 250 and do it. But um, I like the smoothness of running in uh, manual mode. So I, um, because I have two threads, I'm not going to try to do my tie off feature. Um, I am go just going to do some needle up, needle downs to tack this off. So I'm going to hit start. Uh, actually, yeah, I'm going to hit start. I'm going to stitch down to the point. And you saw how fast that was going. So. Um, that's why we say, if you're going to use manual, try it on something else first and then um, see if you like it. Because you don't have to use it if you don't like it. Now I'm going to stitch back out. And remember, the whole point of this is to lay down tons of thread so that you can see, um, so that it's changing the color. So like we're kind of, like I said, thread painting. So there, let me see, I'm gonna turn the lights on really quick because I think you can see it here. So there we have it, our first little diamond is done. Um, there's so much thread there. I'm gonna feel, everything looks good. Um, so now I'm gonna come up into this area. Oh my gosh, there's, it's, it's such a thick look because of the, how much thread is being put down. Um, so now I am going to come in and fill up this leaf. And I'm gonna try to fill it up so I can fill up halfway and come back down. Uh, if you feel like you need more thread there, just run some more thread, you know, just go over yourself. Don't feel like you have to be perfect. This is not a time to be perfect. And matter of fact, I went out of the lines right here and you can't see it, but of course I'm a quilter, so I just told you. So I'm gonna stitch up and back. Then I can stitch this one. Then I can stitch this outline, come back around swing around and stitch this outline and this petal or these uh, two petal shapes will be done.
All right, so there is our first two center sections done. I don't know, let me see if I can turn some of the lights off. You can see how it's totally changed the look of this. You can see how this is more pronounced now because it's bumped up. Whereas, let me see, let me turn one of these lights off. Well, that's even better. <clears throat> we need definition. So there you see, we um, everything around this has now been raised because we've pushed and squished these three layers, or these four layers down so much. It is very stiff. You can hear me scratching it. So um, my, I just found out that my memory card is full on the other camera. So I'm gonna stop, recharge that. When I come back, I wanna kind of do one section of each like of the sections that I'm gonna do. I will come back. I wanna show you filling in the outside of this. And like, I'll just do the same thing, but I'll kind of turn some music on because I don't feel like you just have to watch it without music. Um, I'll do filling in this outside pebble section, and then I wanna do some fills in this thing as well. And I'll just kinda do one of each, and then we'll um, call it a day for this. I'm so excited to see what you all do. All right, so I've done a thing, and I finished stitching this interior piece. I will move you around. Um, so this is the center section. This looks fantastic especially with the lighting that's going on right now because it really is letting that uh, magnifico thread shine and um you know that's what we're trying to do i'm using magnifico because i want the shine of that um as you can see i've stitched so these petals look totally different than just the outline themselves if i had not stitched in them because our eye is really drawn to the part that is uh, kind of embossed, the faux trapunto part. Um, so yeah, so I did that yesterday. If you're on Facebook, I did that as a live because I wanted to stitch and talk to someone. So today I wanna, or, um, so now I wanna go in and I wanna finish this. I know I'm gonna get interrupted, so we'll see how far I can get. So I'm doing fills inside behind, in this diamond right here, just the diamond behind the circles. I want to fill in the negative space behind the um, feathers and also the space behind these pebbles, oops, behind these pebbles on this piece. And then in the outside, I want to fill in behind these kind of swirl uh, designs. So we'll do there and there. So that's the other pieces we have. I wanted to do it with you so I can talk you through how I'm doing it. Again, this is your quilt, so you get to pick what sections you either want to stitch in or not stitch in. We're gonna see how good I can do this because the lights are off to make it easier for you all to see. Nothing's changed since the last video other than I changed a bobbin. So, trim that. Where's my thread bucket? So I'm gonna go in, I wanna stitch the negative space behind this diamond. And what I found easiest, and this is just me, I might trace the diamond and then come back and trace the circles or trace the circles as I go. It just depends. I gotta shake it out, I gotta get comfortable. Make sure all my settings are correct. I haven't changed them, so they are. So let's talk about this really quick. This circle looks perfect and I totally cut it in two. That was not a very good, um, a good like fill around there. 
Um, I might have to turn some lights on. I'm sorry, I can't see. There we are. Um, oh, much better. So, um, and that's because I can't see. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna add a little more fills. There's some places that didn't get really get filled up, some over here. And that's just because my lights were off. But what I want you to notice is this circle looks pretty circle in the picture. It is not. It is way not. But when you stand back and you look at this as a whole, nobody's going to notice that. Also, we can see the green stitching here. I'm trying to cover all of that green stitching with my um, yellow. I see a little bit here, so I'm going to go back and cover those up. So now that piece is done. And now we're gonna work our way into do the fill behind the feathers. It doesn't matter which way I go because either way I'm gonna come back and fill in these pebbles. So I can work my way on the inside and then go back and fill the outside. Um, let's do that. So as I'm stitching, I wanna stitch on this outline. Let's see, as I'm stitching, I wanna stitch on this outline right here. Um, and I found that sometimes I can stay on that outline a little better when I do tiny, like do it a little bit instead of doing the, trying to stitch the whole thing. Um, the feathers, I'm pretty good with kind of tracing around them. So we'll see, we'll see what I feel like at the time. <laughs> I gotta stretch it out, shake it out. Um, I don't know what's different from yesterday to today, but the lighting is so good right now. All right, so now I've done the interior side of those feathers. You can see how it's all the uh, color starting to change because we see that yellow. And this is uh, Magnifico 2061 Sun. That's the color of it. So um, because I'm here at another diamond, I'm just gonna stitch this diamond in before I go into um, the outside of my feathers.
What I really love about this process, and with, especially using the microfoot, is that when you're stitching, you can see where the needle is, and it's almost like you're just drawing a line with thread. It is so cool to use this foot and see like, yeah, I am just, I can see where I'm going. Um, and so like when it's when you're tracing and backtracking, makes it a little bit easier. You can see that I'm getting out of the lines. I don't care. At the end of the day, it's just a quilt. When you take a step back, nobody's gonna see that I was a thread length away or that something is in a perfect curve. It's all good. Um, you can also see that I'm stitching very haphazardly. I'm just trying to fill up that area with a lot of thread to get that color. So now I am going out into my pebbles. Um, you'll see in this design that this line doesn't come all the way down. I am going to pretend that it does. And I need to look back on the other side. So I'm gonna pretend that, um, that it's coming all the way down because I want it to connect. And that this, uh, because Let's see, the green is there, and then the outer edge, I need to come in. So I have this side, I just need that outer edge. So I'm gonna kind of follow this and connect this outer edge to here and go up. Is that what I did? Yeah. I had to go look at what I did on the other side. Um. So that's going to be, did I just go, the, I just went to the wrong line. Oops. We're going to use that then. 
And that's what I mean. Like, oops, messed up. Who cares? Nobody's going to be like, oh, they messed up right there. Um, so I need, I'm going to come back down here and fill this stuff up. And then I'll work my way around. <laughs> shake it out got to blink I have to blink all right
So there is the feel for my pebbles and bring up my bobbin and trim. All right, so that's the feel for my pebbles, my feathers, and this diamond with the circle. And you can see how stitching all of this down just gives that much more definition. I'll turn the lights off so you can really see it. How everything pops around and um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I'm loving the way this is turning out. So let's go do the last part. These are the last two pieces. And then I will come back and show you what it looks like when it's all done. I just wanted to show you kind of how I'm filling in each element that I'm doing, but that doesn't mean that you have to do it like mine. That's great. Um, the great thing about this pattern is that you also get the paper pattern, um, the printout of the design, so you can color it yourself. So I'm just going to needle down. We'll work our way up. I don't um, usually use the tie-off feature at the beginning um, when I'm using two threads just because I feel like I can sec secure everything a little better with uh, without using that. I am going to turn my lights back on because I have to be able to see. So now this this piece here has this little like fan S curve that comes up and then has the swirls. There's um, did I go in the middle of that swirl? I am pretending that the swirl is just the two pieces. So I'm going to slide in and fill in that one section and fill here and then fill into this one. So you'll see, you'll see how I'm feeling as I go.
All right, so there's the first one. Because these designs connect, I'm gonna shoot right into the next one and do the same thing. So I have now did my outside fill. So you can see how that really does change. This is what it looked like stitched, which is still beautiful. Nothing wrong with that. But once you add that stitching, it just makes things pop. 
Now I uh, went inside the line there, whatever, it's fine. It'll, it'll look hand done instead of computer done, right? There we are. Here's our pebbles and our feathers. We'll go off back to the center with our center pieces. It almost looks like I'm using metallic thread, and I'm not. It's just a tri poly, Magnifico. And then the other side, which I had already done. So now, I am going to leave you. I will finish this, and we will see you back here when it's done. All right, everybody, it is done. I'm so excited. It has been a few days. It's actually been a week since I finished it because I was over at the uh, OSQE show in Dallas, but I'm back. I'm gonna film this outro and then I'm done. But this is the final quilt. Um, I'm, I can't be more excited at the way it turned out. Uh, I did take it off the frame, took some pictures, realized that I needed to do something else on the outside of it, so I ended up just going in with the ruler and doing some straight lines. I believe Quiltable has a version of this automated, so if you have Pro Stitcher, well, obviously we're, most of us are using Pro Stitcher, but um, if you are someone using Pro Stitcher, um, you can also purchase this design and then just uh, crop around the edges and it will sew those for you. But um, this is it. I'm going to try to hold this up to get a good angle with the lighting. I hope this lighting works. I, I can't see it because I'm not behind the camera, but this is the final thing. Um, I did post pictures on uh, Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, um, you've already seen this. And if you're not, you should be on there. Follow me, Adam So Fun with an S-E-W on Facebook and Instagram. But yeah, this is the end result. I can't be more excited. It makes me really want to do another one. I know that uh, Quiltable also has the Kelly version, um, which is a different whole cloth pattern. I think I might actually do that on one of my Deborah Linker hand dies. Uh, here's the back for your viewing pleasure. You get a lot of the detail um, still on the back. And I was using uh, 623 silver on bottom line on the back, so it kind of looks white now instead of looking uh, yellow in the front. So yeah, so I will um, put a facing on this. I have a video for that and go from there. I just, please post pictures of what you're working on. I'd love to see them. Tag me at Adam So Fun. And I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you made one or you get you out of your comfort zone a little bit. Maybe even if you just try to do this uh, background fill a little bit for yourself and see how you like it. But until the next one, we'll see you in the next video. And at the end of the day, it's just quilting. We want to have a good time. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you're notified when new videos drop. <laughs> Bye, everyone.